from Forex Traders Daily. This is your daily analysis with Ross Mullins, live from Richmond, Virginia. Hello, everyone. This is today's video analysis for October 7, 2016. Today, we're going to be taking a look at each of the U.S. currency pairs in anticipation of today's potentially highly volatile news with non-farm payrolls out of the U.S. and some Canadian employment data as well at the very same time. So we want to take a look at each of the currency pairs and discuss the reaction, uh, the potential reactions that we could see after that news. Let's get started here on the USD CHF, the dollar franc. Of course, depending on how the news comes out, whether it's significantly positive for the U.S. dollar, significantly negative for the U.S. dollar, or uh, right on the mark and it doesn't go positive or negative, we'll have to discuss what happens with each pair. Here on the dollar franc, if it's significantly positive for the U.S., if the, the uh, unemployment rate goes down, earnings are up, creation of new jobs, significantly positive. We'll look for this currency pair to continue its upward rise that we've seen over the past few days. Zooming in here on the daily time frame, and you can see uh, rising from the blue zone down here into the 96.60 level, went up to the yellow zone, bounced around for a couple of days between the yellow and the green zone, and now targeting above the 9800 level. We're above 98. We haven't opened and closed above 98, but we are above it. Uh, if the news is positive, we'll look for the continuation higher, likely to break through the 98.50 level, the purple shaded area here, and begin its journey back up towards the 9900 level, which is the orange shaded area. And by the way, the top of the range that we've been discussing, if I zoom it out again here on the daily, look at the black box here. And if we get significantly positive news, we're back up to the top of the long-term range here for the U.S. franc. Now, on the other side of it, again, if we get negative news, if it comes out poor, you know, uh, lower jobs, unemployment rate goes up, uh, lower earnings, if it's negative for the U.S. dollar, we could look for the turnaround. So above the green zone and 9,800, positive news, we look for it to go up. Negative news, just the opposite reaction. We'd look for the push back underneath 98, maybe back underneath 97.80, the bottom of the green zone and the possibility of heading on on the way back down towards the 9700 level, the yellow shaded area. So again, positive news sends us back higher, negative news sends it up. That's the expected reaction. Now, the market can tend to do things you don't expect it to do. So just watch for it. Uh, but I think we have a pretty good handle on what we're watching for here on the U.S. franc four-hour time frame. We discussed the potential breakout of the green zone. It has. It's pushed above it on the four-hour time frame. It's sitting on top of 9,800 on the four-hour time frame. So that would lead me to believe without news that I would want to buy this currency bear. But at the current moment, again, being very cautious because of the news at 8.30 Eastern U.S. time. We'll evaluate after the news. Take a look at the euro dollar. Similar situation. We've been in a kind of a downward uh, triangle. We drew this out like this yesterday in the live trade room. Bottom right along the the 111.20, 111.35 level, the top, and you can see the falling highs here. So we've been in some consolidation, some contraction as we see lower highs and steady lows within that descending style triangle pattern. We zoom it in a little bit here on the daily time frame. The blue box, we've been studying that uh, top to bottom, orange, yellow, pink, and green shaded areas. Obviously, one two, and now is the third time coming down here into the 111.20 level. If we're going to see it go lower, underneath the current supports and break out and start moving back down towards the mid uh, 1.1000s, we're going to look for uh, positive news. Positive news sends this lower. Uh, so good news for the NFP sends this through 111.20 and starts to head back down into the 110s. So that's what we'll be watching for here on the euro. Of course, negative news has the opposite effect. If it's bad news out of the U.S. Uh, with NFP, uh, we look for this to turn around and go back up from the support. So it's a pretty clear area that we're uh, studying today right here into the green zone uh, in between 111.35, 111.20. Good news sends us through 111.20 and lower. Bad news, we bounce off of here and go back up towards the pink, yellow, or maybe even the orange zone for the euro dollar today. Take a look at the GBP. I'm not trading this currency pair. Quite volatile. Uh, I haven't traded it. I did say yesterday uh, that uh, difficult to go short during the live trade room, but uh, I, you know the market's doing unexpected things here, and I don't think that uh, you really want to 
uh, if you're especially inexperienced with trading, you don't really want to mess around with this currently. It's just extremely volatile. So we're just going to skip right over this one right now. US CAD, we have been trading this one for uh, several days. I went ahead and closed, as I mentioned in the live trade room yesterday, I went ahead and closed the remaining portion of the trade with about 180 pips of profit. So it's been a phenomenal trade. But take a look at the top of the chart. Let's go ahead and zoom it in one time. Look at the blue box back here. Look at the right hand side, the green shaded area, the very top of the chart. We are at resistance and challenging resistance. But we have news out of both Canada and the U.S. at the same very, very same time. So this could be a little bit tricky to trade this currency pair. Significantly poor news across the board for the U.S. We would expect this to turn lower and go down off of this green zone and go lower. Significantly positive, we look for it to go higher. That's the U.S. data. Now, we have the Canadian data to contend with as well. Canadian, good news for Canada, sends this currency pair lower. Bad news for Canada sends this currency pair higher. So we have to balance that out. If it's bad news for Canada and good news for the U.S., we look for this currency pair to significantly rise. If it's good news for Canada and bad news for the U.S., we look for this currency pair to significantly fall. If it's balanced, if both currency uh, countries have bad news or both current countries have good news, we might see this just kind of flicker around a little bit. So kind of balance it out. Try to figure out if this is the best currency for, pair for you to trade today because we have news out of both countries at the very same time. Moving on over to the U.S. yen, uh, earlier in the week we saw the market challenge, the, this little black, short black and blue trend line right here. We took the sell. Good news is we used appropriate risk strategies, got out of it, and all of the other trades that we've traded this week have far outweighed that single loss that we took this week. All the profit far outweighed it. So we got out of it. It's moved higher all the way up towards the 100 period moving average, running into resistance. Zoom it in here again on the daily. We, just, we studied this in the trade room yesterday. I'm going to see if I can move this blue circle right there, right there where the blue circle is, orange shaded area resistance, we're at that resistance. So at least at this point, it's not a great idea to go long underneath that resistance. Now, if we get significantly positive news for the U.S., yeah, I think we might look for the break of the orange shaded area and the continuation of this rise that the U.S. had been in. If we get significant, significantly negative news for the U.S., if uh, every piece of data misses the mark, maybe a bounce off this orange zone and a turn back lower again. If you're going to buy this currency pair, I think it either needs to go down first to the green zone or break through the orange shaded area before you would buy it. If you're going to sell it, Try to get as close as possible to the orange shaded area to minimize your risk. But watching the news for uh, whatever direction we want to trade this for the day today, positive or negative for the U.S. on NFP. And if, again, if it's lackluster, if everything comes in right on you know, the forecast, then we might not see it do anything. But still, I, I think it's difficult to, uh, to buy it this close to the uh, significant resistance high right around 104 for the US yen. Take a look at the AUD USD. We have had a significantly positive trade here on this currency pair as a short. I have closed a majority of the profit on the trade and locked in with the stop loss. I'm going to let it ride. Uh, that one singular lot that I have left here, I have 96 pips of profit, about 100 pips of profit on the trade. I've locked in with the stop loss, can't lose, close the majority of profit. So I think I'll leave the one single lot left going here on the trade, same way the NZD USD trade. But let's go ahead and zoom it in here. Of course, we've been talking about the long-term red trend line for quite a long time. We sold it, on our, you know, that that sell right there, the 76.75 is all the way up here at the blue shaded area. Hit the purple zone, we close profit. Hit the pink zone, we close profit. Settled out above or, or between the pink and the yellow zone, so I went ahead and uh, closed as much profit. Stop loss is currently just above the pink shaded area. If we get positive news out of the U.S., if it's good news for an NFP, we look for this to turn lower. Uh, stay underneath the pink zone. Let's, uh, let's take it on down here to the four-hour time frame because this is really a good picture of it here on the four-hour time frame. Take a look at that right there inside the red circle. Uh, if it's... If it's good and positive news for the U.S., we look for it to stay under the pink zone and target at least, at minimum, back down to the yellow zone, if not a break under the yellow zone and a continuation of the downward fall. Negative news out of the U.S., we we may see this turn back higher again, uh, back above the pink zone, above 7,600. Uh, we could even see it back up here towards this purple shaded area or higher. 7,635.50 is the purple zone. So this pink zone is a key player today. Underneath it, positive news, we go lower. Above it, negative news, 
we look for the uh, Australian dollar to turn higher once again, but still holding one singular lot out of the trade from the blue shaded area uh, and just capturing profit all week long on this pair. Same with the NZD USD. We sold it, sitting currently about 140 bits of profit. Uh, it's a phenomenal trade. Closed majority, locked in with stop loss, can't lose on the trade. Let's go ahead and zoom it in here on the daily time frame. Our sell, that short, is all the way up here at this orange shaded area where it touched the red, uh, blue trend line here. So it's been a great trade all week long. Uh, blue shaded area, let's focus in on that blue shaded area. This is the zone to pay attention to today. Underneath it, uh, 7155, 7175, and positive news for the U.S. We're back down to and a continuation of the downtrend to the yellow zone, if not even further. Where's that next zone? Let's uh, see. Zoom back out. Let's pull this purple shaded area right here. Let me see if I can get it selected for us. So I can pull this next support zone over. There it is right there. Pull that over here like this. Zoom it back in. Squeeze it in a little bit. So that purple shaded area becomes our next potential target. And by the way, that's with the long-term black trend line. So that's interesting. Uh, that's assuming positive news for the U.S. Negative news, of course, we may see the market turn back higher again, uh, back above the blue zone, probably take us out of the current trade and heading back up here towards the green shaded area into the 7220 45 level for the New Zealand dollar. So positive sends it lower, negative news sends it higher. Lackluster news, you know, hitting the mark and not really doing anything significant deviation then we might just see the continuation of the current momentum, which is bearish. And we'd want to look for opportunities with that, take it down to the four-hour time frame. And, of course, you can see the blue the blue shaded area congestion. We're underneath it right now, but, again, don't think I want to go short until we get through our news. Uh, let me look at that black trend line again. I want to show you where that comes from. There it is right there. Take a look at that. that it, it might be adjusted a little bit here. Let's see if I can pull it out a little bit closer towards that purple zone, but you can see uh, coming up from the bottom. So you can see where that comes from. So if it goes lower, if we get positive news and it goes lower, keep an eye on where that black trend line sits down there closer towards that purple shaded area for the New Zealand dollar. From Forex Traders Daily, this has been your daily analysis with Ross Mullins. If you would like to get Ross's analysis on all the currency pairs he's watching and all the trades he takes today, join him in his live trade room by clicking on the link below. Please leave any comments you have about today's video in the comments section below.